What's up everyone and welcome to a new video. I'm so stoked because I'm finally talking about rotoscoping. Rotoscoping is what animators have used in the past to trace an animation frame by frame by using the previous frame. Now, how do we use that in today's terms? Well, in After Effects, we're gonna use rotoscoping as a mask. So think of rotoscoping as a mask that masks the outline of your subject. So if I'm moving, just imagine that if I'm moving around all over the place, how hard it would be to separate myself from the background. Now with After Effects Rotoscope 2.0, you can literally do that with just a click of a button. And it is so powerful and it looks like this. So when you do it, you get these purple lines on the edges of your clips and you are able to separate your layers by using a couple filters and you can manipulate each layer individually. It is so exciting and dope. So we're gonna jump into what you can do with this effect and a little bit more basic stuff because later on in the week, I'm hopefully going to be showing you guys some dope stuff you can do with Rotoscope. So let's jump on into it. Link, are we linked? All right, we're linked. So I don't really know. Oh shit, look at this hair. This is why I'm wearing a hat. All right, oh my God. Woo! Restart. All right, so that was pretty sick. If you guys wanna see it behind the scenes on my studio and everything and how I'm changing these lights, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do a behind the scenes vlog. Also, if you thought about creating your own content and selling it or like a LUT pack or anything, now is the time to do it because it is literally incredible. Click the affiliate link down in the description below and that is called SellFi. It's what I use to basically create content and they'll hook you up with a nice discount. Also, if you want to get free stock footage, also click the art grid link. I use that for pretty much every tutorial and it's great for pretty much anything you want to practice. And finally, my ultimate effects pack has been selling like crazy and I've been receiving nothing but great feedback. So if you guys wanna check that out as well, it will also be linked in the description down below. So without further ado, let's jump on into this tutorial. And I must say, this setup looks dope. I mean, check it out. That is crispy. All right, so now that we're on the computer, it should be noted that you need to open up Creative Cloud Desktop and actually head on down to Beta Apps right here on the left-hand side and install After Effects Beta because this is not in the full version, only After Effects Beta. Once you install that, you can open up After Effects Beta and start to get to work. I have a couple examples lined up today, but we're gonna get started with this one because I think it'll be easy. As you can see in this clip, we have a clear contrast between the background and the foreground or our subject. So it's pretty easy to mask this out frame by frame. <laughs> Just kidding. It takes forever, but with Rotobrush 2.0, it actually does it all for us. So what I like to do is scroll to the very beginning of your clip, head on up here to this tool right here. If you click on it, it comes with the roto brush tool and the refine edge tool we're going to be talking about both of these today but just long press and make sure roto brush tool is selected and in order to use this all you have to do is double click and it will bring you into the layer view of our video so if you zoom in by using the mouse wheel scrolling up you'll see that we have a plus sign and a green circle if you hold the alt button or option on a mac it becomes a minus circle now both of these will come in handy later but let's zoom out by using the scroll wheel and if you hit hold space and click and drag around you can move around your layer within after effects so what we're going to do is start drawing around our subject now it doesn't have to be perfect as you can see after effects has some smart learning and it will start finishing our mask for us so just start clicking and dragging around here it can be a rough mask something that looks good and just like that we have masked out our entire subject now one thing that after effects does and gives you the ability to do is down here um, beneath your video, you can toggle different boundaries. So you can toggle an alpha just to see what your mask looks like, and you can toggle it on a red background, or you can change your background color by clicking this red button right here. I like to stick on a black background because if you look and zoom in, you'll see that our edges by the hair is not smooth at all. And this is where the refine brush tool is going to come in. But before I start getting started with that, just know that you, you can hold the alt key and click and drag to erase a section that you didn't want to mask. So keep that in mind if you need it. 
So what I'm gonna do now is head on up over here to the Roto Brush tool and long press on it and go to the Refine Edge tool. Now what the Refine Edge tool is, is a blue plus sign. Now this will refine our edge where the hair is so we can get a more precise mask. So typically what I like to do is just start clicking and dragging around my hair and my hat and any detail areas that I would like to do. Honestly, I would recommend doing this around your entire subject as it creates a better high quality mask. Now, if you let go, you'll see that it creates a black and white portion around where we clicked. Now, if you want to add more detail in certain areas, you can literally just start clicking and painting wherever you like to create more detail around that mask. So now that we have the entire roto complete, what do we need to do? Well, we need to go frame by frame and make sure the roto is good. So the fun thing is I'm just gonna click the space bar. And as soon as I click the space bar, After Effects is going to start working. And it is insane because you this is literally real time. It is masking out frame by frame and check out the detail we're getting in the hair on the edges. Now you can pause it at any time and adjust the mask as needed, but I found that After Effects does a great job at tracking my subject. It's really fun to play around with these different modes as it's going so you can zoom in and see what is going on and check out how clean this mask is already. So we're gonna let After Effects do its thing so it's just finished, and as you can see, if we play this back, we have a perfect mask, and it is actually insane that it was able to track this that well. And I love playing around with the different um, layer view modes here and the x-ray modes to toggle on what is actually working to see the mask in action. So now if we go out of layer view, you can see that we go into our composition view and it shows that our subject is completely masked out of our background. And this is insane because that was happening in real time. It probably took about five minutes total to mask out this subject. Now I want you to think really quick how long this would take you to mask out the subject. Now once you have that masked out and rotoed or rotoscoped, you can actually hit control D on your layer and then on your bottom click clip layer, let's delete the roto brush tool. So now we have this top video layer that we can mess with. Now, if you change the scale of your bottom video layer, you'll see that it uh, manipulates your clip, but check this out. If you change the scale of your top video layer, that's your rotoscope. So you can now change the scale and the position of your clip if you want. So that is really something to keep in mind. And I definitely have some new tutorials with that idea coming here in the future. But let me show you something real quick. If you right click down here in the timeline and click new text and then type a text layer, name it whatever you want and pick a font that you like. Here's where it gets really cool because that text layer, if we hit P on our keyboard and position it however we want, check this out. If you drag it beneath your rotoscope layer, it will actually render behind your clip. And that is pretty powerful and that brings me to our next example. So this is the next clip that we're gonna do and before we get started, I want you to think really quick how you would actually do this knowing how to rotoscope now. Cool, you got it? Cause I do. All right, let's jump on into it and show you how to do it. Let me just delete all these clips and delete our roto brush and check out our base clip. All right, so now we have the base clip. So for starters, let's head on up to the top hand portion and long press and select the roto brush tool. Go to the beginning of our clip and double click on our video layer and zoom in and let's just start creating a rough mask around our subject. As you can see right away, it almost got everything, but there's a couple areas that we have to touch up. I'm gonna hold Alt to delete a portion of that layer and Alt again, and then I'm going to click and make sure the ear is selected. And everything looks pretty good, um, except for right here, I got to remove some of this, add that back in, and it looks pretty clean. Now again, let's long press up here on the brush tool and click on the refine edge tool. And again, let's click and drag around our subject to make sure this edge is nice and clean. All right, and if you are happy with that, then just click the spacebar and watch the magic happen. 
So that actually happened really quick and it looks great. So one thing that you should keep in mind is once you get your roto done and you're happy with it, click this button right here because that will actually lock your roto brush settings. We didn't this one on the beginning one, but this way it'll lock and render out that roto just so we don't mess it up later on. So now that our roto brush is frozen, we can actually come in here and play around with the refine edge and smooth it out and feather it as much as you want. But I found that I typically don't play around with these settings too much, uh, but you may get better luck if you play around with it. Sometimes increasing the contrast creates a better look. So let's go out to the composition view and check out what we have. This is our clip that is masked out and it looks pretty decent. So what we're going to do is hit control D, duplicate that video layer and delete the roto brush off our bottom video layer. So for starters, let's create that text layer. So right click new text and I'm gonna name this and we're gonna go to my favorite font, heavy, change the size and change the position of this to right about there. And I'm gonna put some spaces in between. And I just want this to look like it's behind my subject a little bit. So I'm gonna go right there. And now that we have that, let's drag that behind our roto brush layer. And right away, it already looks pretty dope because it's clearly masked out behind our subject. Now, in order to create the two person effect or three person effect, click on your roto brush layer and hit control D and then change the position of that by clicking P and drag the person or subject wherever you would like. I'm gonna drag it right there and I'm also going to change the mode. And if you don't see the blend mode option, click the toggle switches button down at the bottom until you see the mode option. And let's change this to soft light. I think that looks good. And I'm also going to drag this behind my roto layer. So I want this to be in the background. Now we can hit control D on this layer that is in the background again and change the position to the right hand side because that will create the effect that we had in the beginning. So that looks pretty sick and it was so simple to do. I just seriously can't imagine how long this would have taken me to do without Roto Brush. Can you imagine frame by frame masking out all of this stuff but yet you can do it within Roto Brush in a few minutes? It is so powerful. All right, let's roll the closer. Well, that was pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did, please let me know down in the description not the description, the freaking comments. It's been a minute. But no, I'm stoked to be creating content for you guys. And honestly, I need your feedback. I need comments, suggestions, video effect ideas, effect ideas. Because like, it is so hard being a creator and just every week coming up with something new. So I really appreciate the feedback. Also, subscribe if you're new because some of you guys watch my videos without subscribing. It seriously helps out the channel. And click that like button. It takes a second and it, uh, it recommends my videos and then hopefully I can blow up and you know, Give more people some love because we're all to hear about sharing creativity. I am speaking way too fast. I'm just going to end it here. I'll see you guys next time.